Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. This is a much different type of video for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm wearing a tank top. Why am I wearing a tank top? Because I'm a fucking man. That's why. I chop wood. I drink whiskey and I treat my wife like shit. And I also build cars. I know how to build the, the motor. Put oil in the in the car and fill up the wheel or tire at the gas station because i'm a man and what else do men do do you ask they travel the country and they soul search and that's exactly what i did because i'm a man so if you're new to the channel i basically went on this road trip a few months ago traveled across the country it was a really pivotal moment in my life because i got to see all these places i've never been and it was a really wonderful experience I, I made a whole video about it. it's actually my favorite video i've ever made i think slept in my car which is like a really small car i thought you know what maybe for people who have a sedan i, I could give a little tutorial on how i did that i did it for super cheap which is a huge plus right because times are tough right let's be real and i had just quit my job which was the whole point of this trip and i learned a lot while doing it and throughout the experience so i feel like i don't know if you're looking to do something like that this is the video for you regardless of it all please make sure to like comment subscribe also follow me on instagram it's at matt the bat all those links will be below i work really hard on these videos and i hope that this video helps you or you at least find it interesting feel free to tell me i'm a fucking moron in the comments too because i am the least literally the least handy person ever don't let this shirt fool you but anyways let's get into it so basically i drove from austin to la the whole trip was over a month i found these places on hip camp or airbnb like these cheap lots or free lots that you can go park your car in and sleep i've never camped or anything like that so this was really like my first time ever doing anything like this and i was by myself and i was also sleeping in a four-door Hyundai Elantra, which if you know, it's like a pretty small car and cuz I'm such a man I'm six feet So you, you can imagine that was pretty hard for me to sleep in the car on account of I'm so tall and manly But basically I watched a bunch of YouTube tutorials on how to like do this for cheap combined all that information together And then did my own sort of thing. It wasn't perfect, but it worked So the first big step was creating the window covers. You could basically find all the supplies for that at Walmart um, I got this big kind of uh, cardboard three panel thing that you'd use for like a school project one of these things you know one thing that's really important is to make sure you get a black project board and the reason is because from the outside of the car you want the car to look as natural as possible and look a little bit stealthy in case you need to sleep somewhere like a walmart parking lot a cracker barrel side of a road anything like that i feel really fortunate that i have a home and i have somewhere to go back to and this was just for the experience but for many this is like a life or death situation. This is how people how people live. So to be able to have this black outer coating of the car helps you blend in a bit more. In the night, you can't even tell that someone's in there in a lot of ways. And I got duct tape and tracing paper. I used tracing paper to outline the inside of the car window, making sure you get in the groove so that way it fits snug into the grooves. One of the great things about sleeping in a car or like fitting these to your car window is there are so many grooves that just naturally exist in a car's like shape. So you can actually Put the cardboard in and it will shit it will shit oh my god <laughs> it will shape itself flush into the window so then you put the tracing paper on the cardboard obviously and then you cut it out making sure the black side is on the outside and once you get each shape of the window it's easy just to trace them and duplicate it because it's gonna be the same on each side then you want to take duct tape and sort of fold it over the edges with a little lip on it and that lip is really helpful for fitting into those grooves as i talked about earlier it helps block out any excess light and it helps it just fit really snug in there like you can literally like clip it in and it's not going to go anywhere something that i found helppful was adding these little duct tape flaps, which actually help you pull it out because it does get stuck in the groove so much that if you have one of these little duct tape flaps, you're able just to pull it out like a little handle. And then labeling which window is which is really helpful because when you're sleeping in your car, you don't have a lot of room, especially in a sedan. So you need to really organize yourself and have everything laid out and ready to go for when you pull into the desert at night and it's dark as f and you literally are using a flashlight to try to set it all up. I did not know this was here last night. I could have one, popped my tire or two, killed myself by stepping on this when I came out. It was so dark. Like it's way easier to have everything organized and just stack them on top of each other, get yourself into a flow, into a system to, you know, quickly set up, set up shop wherever you go. I personally only did the windows in the back. I see people do it a lot in the front as well. But my thought process was if I just hang a curtain with a shower, a small shower rod, I can block out all the light at the back. You wouldn't see that I was in there. And then in case of emergency, I wouldn't have to pull all of the um, cardboard off of the windows. So get the cheapest blackout curtain you could find at like Target or Walmart or whatever and a tiny little pressure rod and you will be totally good. Hey guys, just wanted to drop by and let you know that I am gonna make love to this coffee. Sweet, sweet, passionate love. I am gonna look these beans right in the eye and I'm gonna make love to them. One, because I'm lonely. And two, because they're so goddamn delicious. This is Super Lost Coffee. It's my favorite coffee based out of Brooklyn, New York. Go buy it, link in bio. All right, I gotta go make love to this bag, so I'll see you later, guys. 
So another thing I did was I bought these cheap gutter filters from Lowe's. They were extremely inexpensive and I treated them almost as like a little protective screen that could fit in the window. So the gutter filter already has a screen in it. Technically the bugs will stay out or whatever. But I was like, I don't know what kind of bugs are in the desert. There could be like little sand fleas or something. I don't know, smaller bugs than like, you know, a tarantula or whatever that could like slip through the thing. So I bought an additional little mosquito netting and just super glued it on top of it just to give double the protection for bugs. And then what I did was I cut the top of it to the shape of the window of the car. The bottom of the gutter filters have this natural lip in it, which can just fit straight into the window. It's actually really helpful. This works really great for windows that are flat. My windows are a little bit curved and I feel like most four door sedans are. So I just used the excess of what I cut off and just stuck it in to the bottom of the lip and it covered the remainder of the hole. This is probably a much easier way to do this, but as I said, I want to do the cheapest way possible just as like a challenge to myself. And then I folded those cardboard flaps. That way I can create a little window if I needed to. And as you can see from the outside of the car, it, it's pretty like you can't really tell even in the daylight. So you can imagine at night, like it just looks like my windows are tinted or it looks like my car is just parked regularly. It's kind of crazy because I am tall. So like sleeping in this car, I didn't know if I could do it. And everyone was like, you're not gonna be able to do that. And I'm like, that watch. So I folded down the seat and I slept with my feet in the trunk. So I went around to furniture stores in Austin and said like, hey, do you have any overstock cushions? So they literally will have these cushions that just like they can't sell. They're just extras or, you know, uh, from a couch they threw out lying around. So they're like willing to give these to you for the most part. I told the girl there, I'm like, I'm building a bed in my car. She's like, I don't give a, f I'll just give you whatever. Like, you don't have to tell me your life story. Get the f out of here. I'll get, I mean, I'll give you the sit, just go, just leave. No, I'm just kidding. But it was really helpful because she gave me a bunch of them and I was able to like shape them in the back of the car and fill in the well of the trunk. Cause the thing that's really uncomfortable about sleeping in a sedan is when you fold the back seats down for the trunk, it's at a kind of an angle and then there's a dip into the trunk, right? So you need cushions that are high enough that your body will be kind of level with the back of the seat, which is where your like torso will be sleeping on. So that's why I say get couch cushions instead of pillows because couch cushions are actually firm and are supposed to support you and your chubby little ass. I had a yoga mat. I folded that over the top part where my torso goes. I bought the cheapest possible mattress topper. And the good thing is if you buy like a queen or a king, you could fold it up multiple times. We'll make it super soft and you can just lay it all the way across the back. I then just used some extra blankets I had lying around the house and pillows and just kind of propped it up, made it really nice and then put a sleeping bag on top of it all. And it was actually oddly comfortable. I will say the hardest part is the more you build it up, the less room you have around your waist area, which is where it goes into the trunk. So I'm a side sleeper. It is hard to sleep on your side. You kind of just like have to sleep on your back or on your stomach, which is what I did the whole time I was sleeping here. This is actually not bad. <laughs> I didn't know you were so handy. I just learned all this from YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it was under hundred dollars to, to do all of that. So, oh, another thing too, is you could buy rain guards from Amazon. Those are probably the most expensive thing that I bought for this. I think they were probably like $30, $40. They keep rain out. So when you do have this screen mechanism, it actually will deflect the rain from it and go over it, which I didn't, luckily didn't run into any rain when I was on my trip. It's good to have that so you can keep the window open and get that filtration while also protecting yourself from the rain because there is like cardboard in the car and stuff like that. So you don't want to get that shit all soggy and, and everything. But yeah, this method worked out pretty well. I kind of organized all my stuff on the side of it in bins. And then in the wheel well, I put like stuff that I like my camera and stuff like that, my computer, things that were, um, you know, I didn't want to get stolen whenever I was parked in some random sketchy spot. Another tip is to have multiple flashlights in different parts of your car. So I had one in the front, I had one in the back, and I also had a spot that I kept my keys and a knife. So I think you should have a weapon just in case you need to protect yourself. Like I had to in Vegas, but it's for sure a necessity to have things at an arm reach in case you gotta get the fuck out of there for some reason, you just gotta, Grab the keys, grab the whatever, hop in the front and you're you're gone. You know what I mean? It's helpful to be prepared. The fan is also extremely important because it's gonna get hot sometimes, like especially if you're traveling cross country, the climate changes so quickly. So I was in 30 degree weather when I was in New Mexico. And then by the end of my trip, it was like hot as hell in some places. So it's like, it really depends on what time of the year you're going, but I think a fan is crucial. Some helpful resources if you're just doing this trip for fun is I would use Hip Camp. There are places you can camp for under $10. Some places are like five bucks and you could park your car in the desert and know you're safe and know you're guarded by people and you're somewhere legally parked. It's actually really cool. But if you want the adventure, I would say just uh, look up online all the spots you can stay and there are so many places you could park your car and just sleep at for free 99. But I don't know, I just think that therapy through travel is so important, you know, it's wonderful. I think everyone should do it and I think going on a solo camping trip is a great way to soul search. I deleted social media for this trip and I was really just kind of by myself and it was one of the best, probably the best month of my life. But I don't know, let me know if you have any questions. I would be so happy 
to talk you through anything or tell you these places I stayed. If you want to watch my video, I would be so happy if you check that out. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for uh, watching that video. It is one of my most viewed videos, which is phenomenal because I worked so hard on it and I really wanted people to see it. And I hope it continues to grow and I hope you continue to watch my channel and show me love, you know, like, comment, subscribe, little bell notification, ding, all that good stuff. You guys are truly, truly the best. I gotta skedaddle, I, I gotta go, I gotta go <clears throat> work on the railroad. I gotta do some, some manly shit. I gotta, I gotta uh, ride a motorcycle and get, get, get drunk. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. All right, I love you guys. Thank you. Make sure to tune in next week or else.